everyone. Welcome to the Fleece and Harmony podcast. This is our first episode and uh, we've wanted to do a podcast for quite a while now, but we wanted to make sure we had the time to actually do a fairly good job and put one out fairly regularly. And we feel like, I think we're at that stage now where we're at least ready to give it a go. Um, for those of you who don't know us already, I'm Jennifer and this is my sister Kim and we run uh, the yarn company Fleece and Harmony here in Prince Edward Island, um, which is on the east coast of Canada. Uh, we have our own flock of sheep and we spin other local fleeces into our yarn. Um, we're looking towards expanding to spinning other uh, Canadian fleeces as well as our demand grows. Uh, if you want to know more detailed information about us, there's actually a really good segment or a fairly, at least a fairly lengthy one that was done by Fruity Knitting uh, in their episode 55 and you can go ahead and watch that and we talk a lot more about our background and how we got here. So I'm just going to hand it over to my sister Kim now just to talk a little bit about what we want to try to accomplish with this podcast. So since this is the first podcast, we'll just kind of do a little bit of a rundown of what our object objectives are for doing it. Um, first of all, and foremost, we want to um, talk a little bit about our lives on the farm because the, far the base of everything is the farm and our flock of sheep. Um, we also um, want to support uh, producing yarns and, and fibers in a sustainable way. So we'll talk a lot about sustainability and traceability in yarn and supporting local makers. Um, we're coming to you from our, our shop that's on our farm property. So we'll, over time, well, I'm sure you'll get to see all of the, all of the shop as well. And we want to, um, we're really advocates for natural fibers. So that's not to say that, um, you know, our, our shop is free of any synthetic fibers at this point. Our own yarn certainly is, but um, we do want to move the conversation to really natural unprocessed fibers, whatever those fibers are, alpaca, sheep's wool, mohair, all of those uh, things that we've incorporated into the yarns that we produce here for ourselves. And uh, we want to continue to move um, that, uh, that conversation forward throughout uh, over time to, uh, for knitters and makers and, and so forth. And I really think that that's about it. We'll talk about our farm life. We'll talk about the mill because obviously that's the, the another big part of everything that we're producing yarns here. And um, we'll talk a little bit about our suppliers and uh, also some of our customers because we do custom milling as well. And uh, we support um, some other great local businesses by um, giving them a, a way to process their fibers that they're, they're raising from their, their animals. So, Yeah, so we thought we'd start out with uh, talking about some of the yarn bases that we currently sell and we do have plans actually to launch a couple more over the uh, upcoming year all of which will be 100% um, natural fibers uh, but we do have four that are for sale online on our web store right now and uh, I just happen to have them all in our seagull colorway uh, which all of a sudden I'm making everything in seagull and there's <laughs> actually a pattern release uh, coming out on December 5th from Making Stories that also uses seagull uh, and it's designed by Marie Green of Olive Knit, so you might want to check that out. Um, so I think I'll go from the thickest to the thinnest. Um, we do have what we call the Belfast Bulky. Um, it's a 20% alpaca blend. It's a four ply. It's got 70 yards to 85 grams, so it's quite thick. We've used it for quite a few things lately. We're just kind of getting into really exploring it, um, including the garment that Kim's wearing, which we'll talk about a bit more later. So this is a really nice, cushy one for a fast project. Uh, I've really enjoyed working with it in the couple of projects that I've done. Next we have our Air and Weight, which is a three ply. It's 100 yards for, or sorry, 150 yards per 100 grams. This was sort of what we started with. It was our most popular for a long time. Um, every skein contains at least 60% lamb's wool to keep it nice and soft. It's very, very squishy. Uh, it's great for cables, brioche, and things like that. And it does knit up fairly quickly as well because it is an air and weight. We've used it in a lot of sweaters. Um, we have a sock pattern for it that's free on our web store called the Maritime Wool Sock Pattern. And it uses two skeins and it's just perfect for this if you wanted to give that a try. Next we have our two-ply worsted, which we call Selkirk worsted, um, and it's 
200 yards for 80 grams, so it's a bit finer. This seems to be picking up in popularity a lot because of course worsted weight is very popular for all kinds of different projects. It's also very squishy. Um, it also contains 60% lamb's wool, um, and uh, yeah, it's a great product too. I've knit a few things out of this. And finally, the finest that we have available right now is this three-ply fingering. It is 380 yards for 114 grams. It's the one that's used in the Making Stories pattern that's released on December 5th. Um, and it was very popular over the summer. So the plies are quite fine. It takes a long time to make. Um, so we do <laughs> tend to run out of it occasionally, but there's, it's available online right now still to be purchased. So we should also mention that um, when we're producing yarns, we're, we're um, spinning all of the yarns in the natural color of the fiber and the yarns are all dyed in the skein using greener shade dyes which have been GOT certified. Um, Jennifer is doing the dyeing, I'm doing the spinning. Um, and everything is, uh, as I said, dyed in the skein. Um, we also, because we're combining lamb's wool with sheep's wool, you have different, slightly different textures. Those two fibers take up the color a little bit differently. So all of our yarns, even in the solids, have some kind of tonal variations uh, in them as well. So it makes it uh, for, for an interesting uh, um, texture and story and color story. Yeah. So I think now we'll just, we are knitters, of course. We should have said that. We, <laughs> we knit obsessively all the time. Um, so we're going to do the typical knitting podcast thing and go through our recent projects and what we're working on. Um, we're always working on something. We're not, we're like semi-monogamous knitters. Yeah. I was <laughs> monog monogamous up until this last project that I started yeah. before I finished the one I was doing. And before. I positively hate monogamous knitting because if I don't <laughs> feel like working on that one project, nothing gets knitted. Okay, so I guess I'll go first. Yep. So I recently did a couple of really fun things. Um, I'll start with the smallest one. So I discovered this. I wanted to knit something with the bulky alpaca that we were just talking about. Um, I also wanted to knit something really fun because I was just coming off my next FO that I'm going to show you, which was pretty intense. Um, and so I knit a pattern by um, Shannon Cook, and it's a hat and a set of fingerless mitts, and it was super, super fun. I'm really, really excited about it, but my husband said, this color washes me out. So I'm <laughs> going to make it again in a different color. But if you're curious, this color is called Plover, um, and it's... It's of course on our website um, and I think they turned out amazing and I don't have the mitts to show because they're actually in my coat in the house because I've been wearing them every chance I get. So really cute, fun pattern um, and I loved doing it. It was super quick uh, and it makes a really nice finished object. And we should say that the wool comes from our own farm with uh, other farmers, local farmers and the alpaca comes from Green Gable alpacas in Tyne, Tyne Valley. Yeah. on the island. Also on PEI. Yeah. So my second FO is a bit of a drama. So I knit this out of um, a base that we don't have online, but I will list this exact wool online um, in time for this to air just in case somebody's interested in it. So this is actually spun by McCoslins, um, which is another mill that most people have heard of. They're very famous for their Canadian wool blankets. Um, they're up in Bloomfield, Prince Edward Island. Um, and we call it our heritage uh, blend and it's usually only available here in our store but I will put this seagull color of it up in case anyone's interested in making this project. This is the Wild and Reckless Heart Sweater. It's by Ash Alberg who we think has a really great taste for designs. Um, I tried to knit it for my husband but I'm sort of a beginner knitter and I didn't understand cable gauge <laughs> very well. So instead it fits my brother-in-law. Yes, yeah, so my husband's very happy. <laughs> yeah, so if you've been to the farm and you've met our two husbands, you will understand how ridiculous an idea it is for this to fit my husband. <laughs> but thankfully it fits Ken, Kim's husband, and he was very thankful because as I was explaining to Ash this morning, the men love these cables going down the tummy. <laughs> We think it makes them feel like they're wearing a suit of armor or like they might have a six pack under there. Um, so I think Ken was prepared to dye it down into the size if need be once he, once he saw that it was a possibility that he was gonna get it. So this is now Ken's sweater. Um, anyway, I knitted out of that heritage blend that I mentioned. 
Um, it's in the seagull colorway. I will put the, um, the yarn online. The pattern is available in Ash's book called Flotsam and Jetsam, which we also sell online. Um, and it was a really, really, really cool project. And I think it makes a beautiful um, man sweater, although the design was originally for a woman. <laughs> So I always do lots of modifications that get me into trouble. So usually my FOs are a story of what not to do. Um, I just like to consider myself an adventurous knitter. We should talk about the buttons. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> so the buttons, like one of the best parts of this design are these lovely buttons that go at the collar. And these are actually locally made. You can get them in our shop right now. We'll also be putting these online eventually. Um, they're made by a lovely uh, a veteran, um, so somebody who has completed their military service and has moved on to their second career, um, and he's really looking forward to having his product out there, and he's finding it very helpful to be able to work with his hands, um, and we were super excited to find them because we've been trying to find someone to make local buttons since we've been open and haven't mm -hmm. been successful. So there's a really nice story behind the buttons. He's very, very thankful um, to get to work with us and we're super appreciative mm -hmm. of having this product. So they're pretty cool um, and he does a great job and uh, we look forward to getting more of them and having them in, in the shop and online. And we should also say that although the wool was spun by McCausland's, it's still our 100% island sourced fiber that we use here. Um, we When we have... Um, a large quantity of fiber that's a little bit too short for us to spin here. We save that up and we send it to McCausland's and they spin the natural skeins for us and um, then uh, then we use that yarn uh, to make the, the heritage collection. So I guess that's my turn for FOs and I actually don't have an FO to show today <laughs> because everything that I've FO'd has, uh, <laughs> has already been shown on Instagram and so forth, so we won't repeat. But I did want to talk about this cute little cape um, that uh, was done in, as Jen mentioned, the Belfast Bulky um, wool alpaca blend. And we also um, stranded that with a silk mohair, um, just to give it a little bit of extra, extra fluffiness because I like fluffy. Um, I didn't knit it. It was actually knit by one of our uh, customers, Jennifer Hicks, and she uh, she knit it and adapted a, the pattern to the weight of our yarn. Um, I especially love the neckline of this because it's uh, I I always like to wear uh, turtlenecks usually or V-neck sweaters and crew necks are not really great for me, but this kind of open uh, ne neck is, uh, I just find it very, very good. I have a little bit of a short neck, so I find <laughs> that it's really flattering. And um, also uh, it's amazing how cozy it is. So it's not hot because it's not full sleeves, but just this little bit of extra comfort over your shoulders is, uh, is great. And, um, as I said, it's made from the, uh, the the Belfast Bulky, and the color is raspberry, raspberry cordial. <laughs> so, so uh, another one of the the colors of that uh, that yarn. We only do a small selection of colors, and I think now you've seen half of them. So that's yeah, great. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I just love how even though it's bulky, it just has some really nice drape um, yeah. over the shoulder, and it looks it looks great. Yeah, and it's a quick knit. Yeah, um, I think it required five skeins of the Belfast Bulky right. to make it, but we'll get the pattern up um, again before this airs. Great. All right, so we are also working on things, of course. So I <laughs> somehow got, well, I guess I've already explained how, but now I have to knit a second Wild and Reckless Heart sweater because I need to knit one that actually fits the intended recipient who was my husband and he certainly wasn't going to let me off the hook because Ken took the first one. Um, and they didn't exactly want to be twins precisely, so we've changed <laughs> colors. They didn't want to be twins at all. Yeah. <laughs> So we've changed yarns and colors. So I'm actually knitting uh, my husband Stevens out of um, something from our fall collection, which was called the Hearth Collection. And there's still a little bit of it left in the shop. And this yarn is called Bark. Um, and it's spun up in our usual air and weight, which is 150 yards for 100 grams. And this is just 100% natural lamb's wool from our farm. So mm -hmm. it's a natural black. Um, it's really, really soft because it's 100% lamb's wool and um, I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see the cables in this color on the film, but it's going to be lovely and of course we're all really excited about it, but I have a lot of knitting to do and I do find cables pretty intense on my hands. 
Um, it's a lot of twisting and, and uh, fiddling, so I can only knit this now in small spurts, particularly since I just finished a whole one for someone else. And then just at midnight last night, I got a text from my niece saying her husband would now like one, and I think he's even larger than my husband. <laughs> No offense to anyone, of course, but uh, it looks like I'm going to be knitting the Wild and Reckless Heart sweater for the next year. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a lovely pattern, uh, and it's really cool. I especially love um, the moss stitch or seed stitch uh, in the background, which makes it look really, really refined and lovely once it's done. So that's my, my whip um, that I'm working through right at the moment. And that pattern's available on Ravelry. Yes. On Sunshine Knit, or sorry, Sunflower Knit. Yeah. And uh, again, it's in the Flotsam and Jetsam book that we have online yeah. as well. So if you um, think the book looks good, you can buy the whole book. Mm -hmm. And if you just want the pattern, you can get it on Ash's uh, Ravelry store. Yeah. yeah. Great. So um, it's a little bit of a theme today for uh, <laughs> works in progress. So I'm also knitting with a yarn from the Hearth collection. This one is called Mantle and it's actually um, an alpaca wool blend. Um, it's spun in a lighter weight, so it's uh, 150 yards for 80 grams. And um, the alpaca just gives it a little bit of that uh, drapiness, and, um, but it still retains the, um, the handle that our, most of our yarns have, which is this really kind of nice squishy, that's a technical term when we're talking about our yarn. <laughs> Squishy texture, but with a little bit more drape. And the pattern that I'm um, working on is a pattern that actually um, Ash Alberg did um, to use with a, another yarn that we made uh, that was a limited edition. Um, but this one, it, it adapts beautifully to different weights of yarns. Um, I didn't change anything as far as the, um, as the, the pattern goes. Uh, it's going to come out to about the same size because I did change the needle size slightly just to get the fabric that I wanted. And again, um, I'm not sure how you're how well you're going to be able to see, but you can see that it's um, a stole. It's called the the hearth stole, and um, it's quite a large um, large wrap around stole. And um, the cables are just beautiful. It's fairly easy to knit. the The pattern is um, a little bit complex but you do kind of get the get the hang of it and get in a rhythm um, it's actually the first cable item that I've knit without using cable needles I'm um, it just I, I have new Chiago needles so I'm using I'm, they're the lace tip points and I find that they're just long enough and sharp enough that I'm able to do um, the cables there's no there are two by two cables is the the biggest that they are so they're, they're quite easy to do without a, a cable needle and I have two repeats of the uh, the cable left, and it's finished. So hopefully the next time we meet, Definitely. I'll actually have a finished yeah. object. Um, this is a, the pattern is a stole that's just to be wrapped around, but I think I'm actually going to put one of Neil's uh, wooden buttons on it, and so that I have an option to make it kind of like a cowl like as well. So it'll be super super cozy, uh, super cozy for the the winter. So. Hopefully you'll be able to, to see this. We'll just hold it here for a second. Okay, so I'm looking forward to having this finished because uh, like I said, I'm usually a monogamous knitter and I dropped another project to start this. And uh, so I have another project that I almost finished that, I, that I'll finish after, uh, after I finish this. Yeah, and this pattern's available on Ash's Ravelry store yes. too. Sunflower yeah. Sunflower knit, yeah. yeah. And uh, we have matching chagu holes in our fingers. Yes. <laughs> Um, we are new Chabu users and we adore the needles, but they are sharp. Yeah. So it makes them, <laughs> it makes them really easy to knit with as far as being yeah. precise, but yeah. you do have to get used to, uh, if you have a yeah. habit of pushing the needle, uh, <laughs> with your finger, then you do kind of get this little, little hole. Kim's is scabbed over, so she's fully functioning again, but yes. mine, I need a bandaid. <laughs> I'm not complaining. We of course adore the needles. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're sharp, so yes. that's all good. Yeah, yeah, that's great. <laughs> I look forward to developing my Chiagu callus yes. so that I won't have to wear a band-aid when I'm knitting right. now, but I can still use the needles. Right. Um, okay, just one or two other quick things before we sign off for our very first episode, and um, one is this hap shawl, which is a pattern we've had for a while, but we've recently um, revamped it a little bit to make a much larger shawl. 
using our two ply worsted which I showed you um, during our yarn review it's quite huge and uh, it was so big I asked the lovely um, Simone of Sand and Sky Creations to knit it for me because I figured well she's much faster um, the color in the middle is bramble and then it's got oyster and slate um, around the outside and we actually just listed kits for this um, online because we think it's a wonderful project and a hat as most of you will know is both a shawl and a blanket mm -hmm. um, so this is just a really lucky baby that's gonna get to lay on this very generous wonderful blanket but it is so cozy um, I just felt it really couldn't be too big and uh, Simone made all my hat dreams come true. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So the original pattern though was by Car Creation, Cheryl yes. Wortman. Yes. And uh, you can buy the uh, you can buy the pattern on her store or on our on our online shop as well. And um, as Jennifer said, this is an adaptation of the original um, the original pattern that now has uh, it's written up like this in the pattern now, right? Yeah. It's been revised. Yeah. So yeah. we just incorporated the much larger version of the shawl. Right. Yeah. And yes, Simone knit it, but it's Cheryl Wharton's pattern. Right. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. I was just, I'm just so thankful that Simone knit it. I'm talking all about her, but God love you, Cheryl, as well, for designing the whole thing. Yeah. 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 So, so it's a great project. Big expanses of garter stitch in the middle. Yes. Yeah, and if you did order this pattern before, um, you should have got the revised version automatically when I updated in our e-store. So if that didn't happen, by all means, let us know. Okay. And then finally, a new thing that we just launched this week are Fleece and Harmony gift cards. And so they are prominently displayed uh, as being available on our website right now. Um, obviously, we've had a postal strike here. Anybody who lives in Canada will certainly be well aware of that. So shopping time um, and shipping time has been uh, cut pretty short. Um, for this holiday season so if a gift card is something um, that will help with that we've made those available right All so right. I think that's it yeah so we hope that um, first of all someone watches this <laughs> uh, and if you did watch it you'd enjoy it you enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you again next time bye bye